New camera release. Yeah, so we're here to talk about it. Hey guys, Omar here, and today we're gonna to talk about the Fujifilm GFX 100 Mark II. Not so much the specs, although I'll give you the specs really fast that were impressive, but really the question, why would you GFX? And this is a question I've asked myself because the files from the GFX are definitely the best, the best files I've ever seen from any camera and I've used a lot of cameras. So this brand new X100 Mark II is impressive. It's a 102 megapixel camera. You don't need that many megapixels, but when you have them, you're like, oh. And the sensor is about 1.7 times bigger than full frame. That means it gives you a little bit better depth of field. Like it gives you a shallow depth of field with a wide lens, which is a very distinct look. The second thing is it gives you fantastic detail, of course, at 100 megapixels. And the third is like out of this world dynamic range. Now, probably the most exciting thing about this new camera is it has the autofocus system, which was introduced with the X-H line, the uh, deep learning <laughs> autofocus, which can shoot, which can find birds and people. There's a little movie switch and better video features on this camera that are exciting for videographers because you get 4K, 68K, 30, 422, 10 bit, and also you could shoot with anamorphic lenses, which gives you kind of maybe like an Oppenheimer look. Mm. Now, something else that Fujifilm has been rolling out is a collaboration with Frame.io, which is a technology which goes from camera to cloud. You can upload your images to the cloud or your movies for some production team to sort of take care of. Now, I've always wanted to do this because I always had this idea that while I'm shooting my events, that I have a guy in chair. Can I be your guy in the chair? I've always wanted this guy in chair or gal in chair to receive the images I shoot as I shoot them, edit them and put them up on the cloud as well where guests can with a QR code see the images as they're coming in. So I love the idea of this camera. I just need any of you a guy in chair. There's a new film simulation called Riala Ace. Alrighty then. Don't know what that looks like. Camera goes down to ISO 80. It has eight stops of IBIS. Yeah. And a 9.44 viewfinder, which is very interesting. And the price is, cha-ching, 7,499. Ooh. <laughs> but remember, we said the phase one cameras, they do have a larger sensor, but are in the $35,000 territory. So this is definitely geared towards the professional trying to create the best images possible. Now, a couple of thoughts on the camera I had. The first thing is the leather, uh, sort of textured leather that they put on this camera. <sighs> I absolutely love it. Uh, I just recently did a video on the new Sony a7C, how they remove the dimple leather for the more traditional textured leather. But I like that this camera has a little bit of bling. You know, I like that. <laughs> Number two, there is no D-pad again, Psh, but now they've included extra function buttons. There's two on the front and there's three on the top. I'll have to try the camera first to see, you know, if those are, easy to push and easy to find as opposed to a D-pad, which is four different directions. Hmm? Just saying. You get a tilting EVF, which is great for looking down into the camera. The screen, the LCD still looks like an old flat screen, the first flat screen TVs with humongous bezels. <laughs> so it'd be nice if that was updated, but it's the older looking screen. That's okay. They've also released a couple of lenses, which would look great on here. The 55 millimeter 1.7 which is about a 44 millimeter equivalent and a couple of great looking tilt shift lenses. All right, so that's pretty much the camera, but let's discuss why would you GFX? Because if you are watching this video and you are a Fujifilm X-T20 Noir owner, <laughs> this camera probably isn't for you. So I wrote down some reasons why the GFX to me is very attractive. Now, the first one is, like I said, these are the best images that I've ever seen. So if you basically want the most detail, the best colors, like I was so impressed by the X100 colors. The first time I, you just in Lightroom put a skin on there of Provia and it just, ugh. imagine you use captured one. <laughs> 
but fantastic. Great detail, great contrast, great dynamic range. I found that the images from the X100, I keep saying X100, the GFX100 series was just a little harder to edit, like slowed your computer down. The GFX50 line is definitely more doable as far as editing goes with, you know, if you have a slow computer. Next, if you're into fine art, food photography, if you're into landscapes or me, cityscapes. Guys, I just found a person in here. Ready, ready? That little window right there. You see that person right there? Guys, that person was in this little window right here. Pixel Peepers Dreams. It's just so much versatility with all that detail. One of my favorite ones is the mega long pano that you can do. Cityscapes usually are very long. There's sky at top, river at the bottom. And so sometimes you can make a very long cityscape or other panos. By the way, the images are 11,648 by 8,000 ish, which are really, really big files. And one thing I don't think you can do is shoot raws that are smaller, which is something I always love to see in cameras that have such big sensors, is if you didn't need the 100 megapixels for any reason, it would just make the camera more versatile. I'm sure you can shoot compressed RAW and smaller JPEGs, uh, but it'd be nice to see smaller RAWs if that's not on there. Using adapters and the GFX system is something that looks great. Um, if you want more of a vintage look and more of a medium format look, you can use older lenses. I've, I'll link up some videos below, but that's really intriguing in the GFX line if you wanna experiment and try to get that original beautiful film look from the GFX system. What I wrote was one photo instead of 3000. What I mean by that is that you are producing one art print, one landscape, one cityscape, or maybe you're like Jan Gonzalez, who's a Fujifilm ambassador, where you have lighting and a set and models and makeup, and you're just trying to get that one beautiful shot, that frame. And I think the GFX is perfect for that. If that is something that calls to you shooting one photo or making art prints, then I think that is, you start looking at the GFX line and these larger formats. The GFX factor, that's the last one I wrote. That basically just means you don't know why you like the image. You're just like, wow, this looks great. And I feel like the images from the GFX pop a little bit more and it might set you apart from the competition if maybe you do the portrait ver you know, the portrait portion of your wedding with the GFX and then switch to another Fujifilm camera for the ceremony. Also, I know this camera was just released now, but this just means that the older ones, which have slower autofocus, um, but they have great sensors, their prices will just start to go down and down as well. So that's always good for us cheapos out there. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next time.